Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got an unboxing for you. I say for you, it's for me, isn't it? The box is for me, what's inside it is for me. But I'm gonna share it with you here on YouTube. I'm just gonna share with you my scent of the day. It's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon on Saturday. I've been out today. I've met up with my brother and his family. We've had a nice lunch together. I had a bit of a walk before I met them, which was good. And I was wearing Drifting from Ikirio. And I chose this one specifically. My brother's son is only, he's not quite three. And I always like to choose fragrances. If I'm gonna be around small children, I like to be a little more careful with what I wear. And I like things that are soft and fluffy and approachable and drifting is just that. It's a lavender that's not got any of the harshness or the green or the herbal nuances of lavender. It's a very, very smooth lavender mixed with musks. It's a little bit sweet. And yeah, it's just mostly a musky, powdery, soft, sweet, fluffy cloud that surrounds you and I really, really enjoy it and I do find it perfect to be around small people. So that was drifting my scent of the day. And now let's get on with what this video is all about and it's an unboxing. So I haven't been buying stuff lately, not, not really, not perfumes at least. And I just haven't been feeling the need to. I love my fragrance collection. I really have curated something that is, is perfect for me. I've got something for all occasions. I am never bored. I'm never feeling like I'm missing anything. And I feel overwhelmed if I have too many perfumes. I think I've got about the 70 mark. So 70 bottles roughly. And I really didn't want to keep adding to it but at the same time sometimes there are things I do really want in my collection and so I'm just very very slowly adding them in so this is a fragrance that I've previously shared as being on my wish list and we're going to get on with unboxing it I've decided not to say in the title what it is so this is the box and how do we undo this it's like we can just pull it open here so you can see that the interior of the box is black does that give you any clues does it if you think you know what it might be go ahead and comment so we have some black this is gonna get messy because I've got to pull this out at least some of it unfortunately so tidy up operation for me after this video is done now here we are going to pull it out of the box can you see what it is can you see what it is there it is so it's tobacco rose from papillon yes i have spoken about this one before because i had it a long time ago and i finished it and I decided I didn't need to rush to replace it because it wasn't one I wore a lot. I do love it and it has a real special place in my heart because it's one of my very early indie perfumes. So when I first really got into fragrance, I pretty much went straight into indie. I already have kind of spent most of my life enjoying fragrances, going and sniffing anything new in the, in the shops. So I was sort of into perfume, but not really acknowledging that I was into perfume. And then when I got into, like, properly into it, it was really straight into the indie perfumes. And really very, very early on, I think my first indie perfumes were from 4160 Tuesdays, but very, very early on, not long after I got into 4160 Tuesdays, I discovered Papillon. And I got the sample set, and that was back when it was only uh, Papillon, launched i think it was just three or four with angelique tobacco rose anubis was it one other angelique tobacco rose anubis i think it was only they launched with three i think anywho anyhow i can't get to the cellophane um i 
enjoyed Tobacco Rose the most and so that was the one that I decided to buy. So I bought a bottle of Tobacco Rose way back when, pretty much when it first came out. And I finished that bottle eventually, slowly, because it's a very strong perfume and it's not my typical taste. It's not the kind of thing that I will always go for. So my typical taste is a kind of like a white floral with a sweetness. That's kind of like generally my taste. I Anything with iris I'm interested in, but nothing that goes really green. So yeah, my, my typical taste is sweeter perfumes really. And this is not that sweet, but I did really enjoy it. And so as I say, I used up the first bottle very, very slowly. Then I managed to get another one. It came up really cheap secondhand. So I just got that one, a uh, partially used bottle. And that's the one I recently finished. Cellophane's off now. That's the one I recently finished. And then I've left it a few months and now here we are with the replacement. So I think when you rebuy a perfume more, you know, more than once, more than, more than twice, then you know that it's definitely one that's special to you. And I'm just getting into it now. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a right old mess. Um, so there we have it, Tobacco Rose. And this is the new lid. The previous lids were clear. And I remember Liz posting on social media that she could no longer get those clear lids. But I think this looks pretty good. The, there's the lid. I don't know if it's it's probably plastic but it's kind of heavy it's not just really light so i think that looks fine i'm more than happy with that so we are going to spray it onto my hand and i've not smelt this now for a little while and i'm very very pleased to have it back in my collection oh yes there we go so how do we describe it? So you can smell, you can smell the rose in there, but it's kind of herbal, savory, almost peppery as well. I know there's hay in here. There's hay in here and I think there's beeswax. And I know that there's also real ambergris. Notes are on the back. Uh, Bulgarian rose, rose de may, oak moss, beeswax, hay and ambergris. That's right, I know that when it dries down, the oak moss starts to come through and you can really you can really tell there's oak moss uh, into that dry down, but it doesn't completely take over. It just gives it this rooty, rooty, slow, earthy greenness that sort of sings in this beautiful tone off of your skin. This is not exactly how I remember it, but my bottle was aged. So this is probably much fresher, or certainly much fresher juice. So it's not exactly how I remember it. It's got a vintage smell to it, like um, almost a hairspray ness in there. And it does smell, I, I feel like I can smell that oak moss or something green in amongst it as well so like it's like smelling dried autumn leaves rose moss yeah it smells greener than i remember leaf a bit leafy yeah like i said sort of like dried autumn leaves not not really fresh and green but it's more like crumbly <laughs> So yeah, I think it needs to age. It doesn't quite smell how it used to. I know that I'm pretty sure Liz hasn't reformulated. I think she's very, very honest when she does things like, um, if she needs to change things, she usually shares it on her social media. So I think the only difference between my previous bottle and this is that this is fresh. It'll be interesting to see how it goes and interesting to let the juice sit 
and macerate a little bit more I think and then I believe it will be back to how I, I remember it but for now very very happy to have it so that is a tobacco rose from Papillon Perfumery. Have you tried the brand? What's your favourite from Papillon? I think my favourite is still Hera. I wore Bengal Rouge the other day, a couple of days ago. I wore Bengal Rouge for the first time in ages. That is beautiful. The, the dry down is so delicious. It's, it's the ambery... It's the ambery perfume that I love. It's that kind of amber that I love. I don't like harsh ambers. I don't like really thick and rich, like too rich and sweet ambers. And Bengal Rouge is just the right level of sweetness and powderiness. And it's really, really beautiful. So highly recommend checking out Papillon if you haven't already. Get the samples. They are so worth it. Liz from Papillon is one of the perfumers that really take her time, care about the ingredients that she's using and have a meaning behind every release, like a, a real strong reason for making the fragrance and a real strong meaning behind them and that really shows in the quality of the perfumes. So that's me, I'm done with this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you can always give it a little like and you can subscribe to me if you haven't done already. And I might even post more videos soon. So see you.